Hello and welcome to another edition of Father Dave's Parish Update for Friday, July 1st, 2021. Well, the, the birds were quiet until I started talking, so <laughs> I appreciate all your patience out there with all my animals and, and the quirkiness. Um, hopefully they're, they're, they'll, they'll quiet down here. Um, just like to begin in this year of St. Joseph with our prayer to St. Joseph as we pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us to show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. St. Pius X, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it has been a busy and wonderful week here at St. Pius. Of course, uh, we're still kind of uh, wafting on the fumes of priesthood ordinations and celebrations. Uh, last Friday, June 25th, Bishop Johnson ordained five men to the priesthood for the Diocese of Des Moines. Um, uh, it was uh, Father Jake Epstein, Father Reed Flood, Father Brad Roby, Father Max Carson, and Father Nick Stark. Uh, we ask for continued prayers for them as they enter into their life of ministry. Uh, a big shout out and thank you to uh, so many of our parishioners and organizations that helped with Father Jake and Father Nick's uh, Masses of uh, Thanksgiving and the Sunday after Mass receptions, uh, especially the Altar Rosary Joy, Knights of Columbus, and the Holy Name Society, our parish staff, and, and the many, many, many volunteers and guests. So. Thank you all for making it a wonderful celebration uh, for our parish community. Of course, as I mentioned, uh, one of the newly ordained, Father Brad Roby, he will uh, be our new parochial vicar. It's the formal title for a pastoral associate or, or uh, associate pastor. Um, he officially will begin on July 8th. Uh, he's uh, been here at the parish a few times, just starting to kind of get oriented, oriented toward things. We're working hard to get his house fixed up. Um, because of just the scheduling of things out there in the world today, we're a little behind trying to get the flooring and carpeting in and all the things lined up for him. Uh, he's been very patient, uh, so please <laughs> uh, keep, in, keep him in your prayers in the next uh, couple days, couple weeks especially. Um, so his first Sunday will be on July 11th here at St. Pius. He will be introducing himself at all the masses before mass begins. And uh, he'll be assisting in some of the liturgies as well, obviously, as presider or as concelebrant. Uh, after the Masses, we hope to have uh, just simple uh, kind of meet and greet, coffee and donut type receptions in the Martha Mary Fellowship Hall. So a chance to kind of meet him uh, uh, for officially for the first time as our new uh, pastoral associate. Um, and um, also just uh, uh, if you'd like to maybe give him a little um, card or something where Encouraging people to have to give him a, a, a gift card shower. I heard that's the term used, uh, especially to any department stores like Target or Walmart or Kohl's, um, or maybe even uh, to Casey's or Come and Go for uh, we all need gas <laughs> and all those types of things. But that way, you can kind of help him get his house set up for any personal items that he might need. So, I'm encouraging again that maybe a little gift card shower uh, you can make. Uh, you can use script our parish script program to purchase those cards as well if you'd like if that's possible uh, again just a way to kind of help father brad uh, step into new ministry uh, other big news of course coming up uh, this next weekend uh, tomorrow will be our fourth of july celebration uh, here in urbandale with the parade that'll be again saturday july 3rd um, and uh, as we're re-entering the parade this year um, uh, we're representing the parish. We have a uh, wonderful classic convertible card that's going to kind of lead the way. It uh, belongs to Norm Borman, our facilities manager. He's volunteered to uh, kind of lead our procession. We have a little banner that we'll invite parishioners to carry, and everyone else can walk along. We have free T-shirts for everyone, as long as the, the sizes hold and <laughs> uh, last. Uh, we have, uh, all you have to do is just show up and put on a shirt, and you can walk with us as part of our parish uh, community in the parade. Uh, the parade itself begins at 10 a.m. We'll be gathering, uh, invite people to gather around 9 a.m. And we'll be gathering uh, our location to start 
uh, for the lineup will be uh, kind of on um, 70th Street. Uh, it's technically it's spot number 36 is our spot in the parade. But it's on 70th Street in between Maryland and Roslyn Drive. Uh, so you'll see us there right along uh, 70th Street uh, on Maryland, in between Maryland and Roslyn Drive. And so please join us. Uh, we've got candy, uh, non-chocolate wrapped candy uh, to be uh, given out to folks. Or if you want to bring some candy along with you, you can do that as well. And to kind of help celebrate the day. So be wonderful to have uh, the parade happening again this year and, and our parish involvement in that. So it's supposed to be, I think, a nice hot Saturday for all that. So it should make a, a good experience for all of us. The building project continues to go underway. They are digging a lot of holes around my house, <laughs> raising a lot of dirt, laying a lot of pipes, doing all sorts of things on the outside. Um, inside the Perry Center, I, they're hard at it uh, with, you know, prepping and doing beginning remodeling work. So uh, again, we hope to uh, this summer to, uh, with the big push this summer to get the school all finished with the sprinkler system, which I think they're on track for that, and to get the kitchen in the Perry Center up and running. Uh, they might be a little behind on that. Again, getting some of the appliances in that we had uh, ordered, but again, um, shipping delays and things are causing problems, but we hope to be operational with a, a hot lunch program uh, come the first day of school, one way or the other. So um, uh, the, the project moves forward. So again, we appreciate everyone's support for, for, the, for that effort. Just a couple other reminders of some things that'll be uh, beginning uh, on Saturday evening, uh, July 17th, we'll have our first Saturday evening weekend mass uh, post COVID now. Um, that'll be a 5 p.m. mass. And uh, so we'll have all five of our masses again with a 5 p.m. Saturday evening. And then on Sunday, we'll have the 7 a.m., 9 a.m., 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. And we are introducing, reintroducing the Saturday night mass as numbers have been going up. And also because we have much more limited parking because of the construction. So um, as I've announced in the newsletter that I sent out and, and uh, here on our updates, um, we'll be uh, keeping all those five masses active uh, throughout this upcoming year until the construction project is completed and we have access to the whole facility again. At that time, we'll be uh, looking to come up with a new weekend mass schedule. Uh, at that point, we will not, uh, unless all the numbers really keep going up um, for attendance and for volunteer ministries, uh, we'll uh, go back to four masses. Um, we're not, we haven't determined the, what the weekend schedule will look like with four masses, but we will probably eliminate one of the masses uh, at the end of the construction period. Uh, just again, because we physically don't need them in, uh, at this point and uh, or at that point, and we'll be uh, needing extra liturgical help. So again, invite people to sign up for liturgy uh, ministries, liturgical ministries, whether they be uh, greeters, ushers, communion ministers, uh, sacristans, lectors, music ministry, art and environment. Again, a lot of opportunities for people to sign up and uh, share your gifts uh, with the broader community. The other addition that will be coming, again, this with Father Roby coming on board now, um, uh, the first Monday in August, which will be August 2nd, we're going to be reintroducing the Monday morning Mass in place of the Monday morning communion service. So we'll have a regular Monday morning Mass beginning on August 2nd at the 815 time slot, like the other Mass times. And so uh, uh, Monday's been my day off, so Father Roby's going to take the Monday Mass. Um, Father Roby's day off will be on Thursdays moving forward, so uh, we'll be working our schedules out uh, with that in mind. Uh, finally, uh, the other reminder of something coming up in the not too distant future now will be our St. Pius X feast day celebration. That'll be the weekend of August 21st and 22nd. On Saturday the 21st, we'll have the 5 p.m. Mass. We'll have a special feast day Mass, um, followed by a simple kind of parish picnic outside. Again, with space limitations, we're going to improvise, do what we can. Um, maybe have some activities for the kids to do uh, in the little green areas around the church. And on Sunday, again, we'll probably have a special prayer and blessing at all the masses and followed by some coffee and donuts and fellowship on Sunday, the 22nd. So the actual feast day of St. Pius X is on August 21st every year. So uh, since we're in ordinary time, the church allows us to kind of transfer our parish feast day to that weekend Sunday obligation. So uh, again, a wonderful time to celebrate as a parish community. 
As always, we thank everyone for your contributions uh, financially to the parish uh, for our, our tithing. Again, um, we're kind of recovering from the, a bit of the slump of the COVID year uh, as our tithing and, and plate collections were down this year because of lack of masses, et cetera. Um, so everyone's been doing a great job. We're, we're paying the bills, we're doing okay. So we appreciate everyone's ongoing support, whether it's through direct deposit, which we encourage people to do. It makes the tithing much easier for everyone and helps to make it a priority for families to really think it through and plan on that each month. Um, and also for annual justice and appeal. Again, bit by bit, we're getting there. Um, I think today we have about uh, 480 or so households that have made contributions. And we're about uh, shy of $20,000 yet to collect uh, toward the total goal. So our ultimate goal is $2,400 excuse me, $204,000, $204,000 uh, for our parish contribution to the annual appeal. So we appreciate your help with that. Let's continue to ask St. Joseph, uh, uh, the patron of the Universal Church this year, and in particular in this month of June, as we focus on his virtues of obedient, uh, obedience and authority, especially as uh, the obedient and head of the Holy Family. So we, we ask his intercession and pray that we can be uh, offering our lives in, in uh, obedience to Christ and all that we say and that we do. Keep praying for one another, my friends, uh, and have a, a blessed week ahead. God bless.